On this exciting episode of Hydraulic Clutch 101, I am going to answer one of the most common questions when it comes to setting up a hydraulic clutch. Which is the best way to do it? To use a hydraulic throwout bearing or to use a hydraulic slave cylinder? Huh, I've seen these videos. Maybe I just used the word exciting a little too generously. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So why am I making this video? Well, for the last 20 years I have been selling slave cylinder type hydraulic clutch setups and because of that I get questions. As I alluded to in the open, one of the most common questions is which is better, a slave cylinder hydraulic clutch or a throwout bearing hydraulic clutch? And I always try to answer those questions as unbiased as I possibly can. These are both really good ways to actuate a clutch. This is my preferred method, and we're going to go into why I prefer doing it this way. But there are pluses and minuses to both of these things. And I'm putting this video together so that you can take the information I've gained over the last 20 years and use it to make your own decision. This might be the right pick for you. This might be the right pick for you. And I'm gonna give you the information so you can make that decision. I recently received an email where a gentleman was asking me about my hydraulic clutch setups. And he had been talking with not one, but two reputable aftermarket hydraulic clutch manufacturers. And they were both bad-mouthing slave cylinders. They were like, it's inferior, it's old school technology, it's terrible, they fail, you don't want to use them. I mean, the information he gave me was that they were pretty down on this type of setup. Well, both of those manufacturers don't sell these. They sell these. And so it makes sense that they sell their preferred method. I sell my preferred method. But I'm not going to do what they did. I'm not going to rag on this. This has some advantages, and we're going to talk about them. So let's compare the functional difference. The hydraulic slave is moving this arm that has a pivot point right here. And you have a throwout bearing riding on the transmission input shaft that is pushing on the clutch pressure plate and applying the clutch. So this is the mechanical solution. Basically, we're adding a slave cylinder to a system that was originally designed to be a cable or to a system that had a Z-bar type setup. It's very common to see tons of vehicles out there that use a setup just like this. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of vehicles use a clutch fork, a throwout bearing, and a hydraulic clutch slave cylinder. It works well, it's easy to maintain, and lots of manufacturers have been doing it that way for years. Conversely, the hydraulic throwout bearing eliminates all this. We'll just pop that out. The bearing fits up against the bearing retainer or is the bearing retainer like the case of this particular hydraulic throwout bearing. And it uses this hydraulic cylinder to directly push the fingers on the pressure plate. First, let's compare ease of setup. This is kind of a wash when it comes to these two units because getting this mounted up to the bell housing, normally this mounts with the transmission tabs sandwiched between this bracket and the bell housing. Obviously, I don't have a transmission here, and that is why I've got it bolted directly to the bell housing. Also, normally, this push rod is cut to length and is not making contact to the window. I actually slid everything in and intentionally had it make contact with the window so that I could properly position the clutch fork for demonstration purposes. I also normally wouldn't have a nut or a washer on this side. Normally it's just a nut and a jam nut on this side for adjustment. So bolting this up, piece of cake. You bolt this to the transmission and bell housing, you bolt the slave cylinder to the bracket, you run your line to your master cylinder, you install the push rod, you completely bottom out the piston in the slave cylinder, and you remove all lash. Simple, easy to install. This is a little more challenging. 
Not overly so, but there are some pitfalls to this that you need to know about. First of all, this is an OEM type hydraulic clutch system. And so it's a little different than the aftermarket hydraulic clutches that you get. This is specifically set up to work on a very specific transmission and everything is already set up and ready to go. But on aftermarket stuff, the hydraulic throwout bearing typically has to be shimmed to be in the perfect location. So the way this would normally work is this is going to be up against your bearing retainer of your transmission. The input shaft for the transmission is gonna come out this hole and your clutch and pressure plate are gonna be in this area. There is no clutch fork, which is why in some ways this does gain an advantage because you are eliminating a mechanical moving part. And the hydraulic fluid pushes on this and that is what actuates your clutch. On an aftermarket setup, you have to get everything set up nearly perfectly. There is a very tight tolerance of exactly where the hydraulic throwout bearing in the resting position must be sitting in relation to your clutch pressure plate fingers. Setting up the depth of this incorrectly will cause it to fail. So measuring that depth on the pressure plate and shimming it correctly is absolutely required every single time. Now that's not that hard to do. It's not that hard to measure and there are some pretty good techniques for setting that up. But you need to know that if it's set up incorrectly, it will fail. Other than that, it's relatively straightforward. It goes between the transmission and the pressure plate, typically bolts in place at the bearing retainer and you run a couple of lines out the window for bleeding. So based on what I've said so far, this one seems like it might be easier to set up, but it's not. Because this is running parallel with the transmission, and because transmissions tilt down towards the rear, getting all the air out of this can be challenging. In fact, that is the number one issue that I deal with on a regular basis, helping customers troubleshoot the kits that I sell. They're having insufficient travel because there is still air in the system somewhere, and usually it's in this slave cylinder. Because of the fact that it's tilting down, the bleeder is no longer the highest point. You have a higher point up here, and so a bubble gets trapped in there. So between the initial setup on this being absolutely critical or it fails, and the bleeding of this being more challenging, I would say ease of setup is about the same. They're not something that the novice mechanic is going to probably have success with right away, but they're also something that someone with minimal mechanical experience can probably figure out and if they keep at it, can get it right. The biggest difference between the two is margin of error. If there's still error in this, your clutch just isn't working properly yet. If this is not shimmed correctly, it fails. And that brings me to my second comparison, and that is ease of repair. This is an area where the hydraulic slave cylinder is, in my opinion, far superior to the hydraulic throw-up bearing. If this slave cylinder fails, no problem. You crawl under the car, you unbolt the slave cylinder, you disconnect the line, you put a replacement slave cylinder on the bracket, you reconnect the line, you bleed the system, and away you go. If this fails, we're doing major repair work. You must remove the transmission to replace this part. And if you've ever worked with transmissions under a car, you know that removing the transmission can be a real pain. Also, this has hydraulic fluid in it, and it lives very near the clutch. And sometimes, not every time, I wouldn't even go so far as to say most times, but sometimes when these fail, because of their proximity to the clutch, fluid from this gets on the clutch, which means if this fails, you might have to replace your clutch as well. Once you've got these new parts on your vehicle, adjustment is another major difference between the two. Other than the initial shimming to set the depth, there's no adjustment on this. I can't dial this in so that when my clutch pedal is pushed to a certain point, that's where the clutch grabs or lets go. And that may be exactly the way you want it. 
you may want simple. You may not want to make those adjustments. Those adjustments take extra effort, and that's something extra that you have to do. You install this on the transmission, you throw the transmission into the car, and what it is is what it is. This guy, on the other hand, has an adjustable push rod, and this allows me to move this clutch fork in or out to set exactly where the clutch is grabbing. I've done this on lots of vehicles, and the way I set it is I park the vehicle on a slight incline like a driveway, I turn the motor off, I put the car in gear, and then I slowly begin to depress the clutch pedal. And when we get to that point where the clutch pedal has moved far enough that the car just starts to roll, that tells me exactly where the grab point is. And from there, if I want it to be higher in the pedal stroke, I extend the push rod. If I want it to be lower in the pedal stroke, I decrease the length of the push rod. Super simple to set up, and it really allows you to make the clutch feel the way you want it to feel. I mentioned how the clutch feels because that is the last biggest difference between this and this. And feel is again kind of a wash between these two, but for totally different reasons. I like to feel the clutch through my foot. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you have any experience driving a classic vehicle that's got a Z-bar or a cable clutch or some kind of mechanical linkage, as you push that pedal, you can feel exactly where the pressure is in the clutch and you get a pretty good feel of when the clutch is going to release. On a hydraulic slave cylinder setup, you maintain that feel because the master cylinder is pushing fluid and there's resistance coming from the pressure plate and we still have mechanical linkage in this arm. You still feel that resistance and you know through the pedal exactly what your clutch is doing. On a hydraulic throwout bearing, that feeling is lost. I've driven lots of modern vehicles that do have a hydraulic throwout bearing, and you push the clutch, it's just steady, it's equal, there's no give in it, it's just one constant amount of pressure, and where the clutch grabs is where the clutch grabs. To me, that's a downside. I like to know where the clutch is grabbing, but there is an upside to that. The reason you cannot feel what the clutch is doing through this is this is a more efficient hydraulic setup. Because we've eliminated this clutch fork and we've gone directly to hydraulics inside the bell housing, typically your pedal effort goes down. And because of that, in some ways, it's a little easier to use. For me, I would rather have a slightly stiffer pedal where I could really feel what the clutch is doing as opposed to a softer pedal where I have no reference as to what the clutch is doing. So that's the comparison. That's the difference between a hydraulic slave and a hydraulic throwout bearing. There are some situations where a hydraulic throwout bearing is the best way to go because there is not a hydraulic slave cylinder option. There are some situations where the hydraulic slave is better because of how you want it to function. I hope that answers some questions and gives you some insight as to the differences between these two setups. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.